hello everyone welcome to another time with the anti-static tutor and in today's tutorial we'll be talking about how we can calculate our cgpa and our gpa you know i've gotten a lot of requests lately about how we can do this and believe me it's a very simple process so in a few quick steps i'll be walking you through how you can get this done with this being said let's head straight right into it so speaking of cgpa what do we understand by the word cgpa the word cgpa is actually an acronym for cumulative grade point average now as a college or university student you must have heard of the term cgpa which is actually commonly used now it is mostly used in quantifying the summary of a student's academic performance now to get the cumulative grade point average of the overall academic performance of the student for a particular section first you will have to calculate what is known as a cgpa now the word cgpa is the summation of your gpa for about two semesters to make a section now to arrive at the CGPA, it is therefore necessary to get the total GPA of each semester and divide it by two. That is, if you are calculating for a section, you divide it by four if you are calculating for two sections. Now, to explain that, over here, a section is made up by two semesters, which is the first semester and the second semester. Now, to get your CGPA, you have to first calculate for first semester. Now, to get your first semester, what you will do is called GPA. That is the grade point average. Now, your GPA, now, it's a summation of all your courses. Now, the total unit of all your courses, you know, we have what we call credit units. We have three unit courses, we have two unit courses, we have four unit courses, and the likes. So, the summation of all those courses divided by the total CGP. Now, let me not me uh let me not try let me not mislead or make things complicated the next phase will get to know better what i'm trying to explain so let's move to the next phase now what is grade point average now get the gpa is shorter in term in time i beg your pardon unlike the cgpa which is longer in time it can be calculated by dividing the total grade point or total quality point by the total unit point of the semester so just like i was explaining earlier on this gpa is shorter in time compared to the cgpa now the gpa has to do with just a semester but the cgpa now it's a combination of two semesters which is a section now it can actually be calculated by dividing the total grade point which is the total for example now the unit courses of all your courses if you have like 10 courses in a semester the total units, you add everything together, then you divide it by the total point for the semester. The next phase, we'll get to understand better what it's all about. So now, this is a table explaining, breaking down the illustration I drew earlier on. So we have courses. This calculation is basically for the first semester. So we have the courses, which is first semester. We have, as you can see, we have a column up there, which courses credit units, we have the percentage grade, we have the grades, we have the points for grades, we have the weighted grade points. So now, to our, our left hand side, we have the courses registered, which are elements of management, BOSS 105, we have mathematics for management, science, MTH 105, we have the study guide for the distant learner, we have the history of philosophy of science, we have use of English and communication skills, we have the principle of economics, and that is that those are all the courses now this we are trying to draw the illustration of having a student we're trying to portray the idea of a student's results now this is this is this is what a student is offering for this particular semester so we have one two three four five six courses and we have the credit unit we have three unit course um, the element of management science is the three unit course the mathematics for management five unit course study guide four unit course, issue of philosophy, three unit course, we have use of English and communication, three unit points and uh, course, we have uh, the principle of economics, one, 
four units credit units so we have the total credit units are 20 22 credit units now we have percentage grade now this percentage grade simply means that if a student registered element of management science which is boss 105 element of management one boss 105 and the credit unit of this course is three and this this student goes into the exam write the exam and everything and has a 65 grade now this grade pass this grade percentage grade simply means that a range of number a range of numbers are grouped and they are identified by grades now we have 70 to 100 the grading process between 70 to 100 is a a so if a student writes an exam and you could tell that okay this exam your score after the exam was between 70 to 100 definitely you know that is a a for that course no now the grading for 60 to 69 is a b now we have for 50 to 59 that's a c for 40 to 49 is a d then 40 to 44 that's a e then 0 to 39 is a f now to break the further break down the grading process so we have a equals 5 we have b equals 4 so we have c equals 3 d equals 2 e equals 1 then f equals 0 now let's move to the next thing which is the point of grades now for this exam element of management one the person who wrote this exam the student who wrote this exam has a 65 and 65 as we have said earlier on the grading process 65 is b so my mathematics for management the person has 72 the student has 72 which is a hey study guide for distant learners the exam score was a 65 the person has b issue of philosophy of science was uh, the score was 60 so it's a b use of english and communication skill one it was a c which is 50 so principle of economics it's um 49 which is a d so now to weigh the grade points now this is the formula we have cu which is credit units for this particular course your credit unit is three the credit unit for this particular course element of management what is applicable here might not be applicable in some courses as courses are have different credit units but we are only taking example that this particular course which is boss 105 we are taking the illustration that it's a credit unit point of three so we have the cu of element of management one as three so we have the points so we have the f that's the pfg now the pfg in a sense that that the points grades which is 65 the point grade for this particular course is 65 now and we, as we said earlier on 65 is a b which is equals to 4 as we have in the table over here this is a b and the b equals to 4 as we have agreed as we have uh, agreed here so i think this should be um yeah yeah that's pfg that's a point for grades yeah pfg point for grade cu is our credit unit so now we're having cu which is three units course uh, point for grade which is 65 for this particular course and 65 is b and b equals four it's all here as you can see here as you can see my my cursor hovering over four so we have b equals four which is the same thing we have here so uh, for the pfg which is point for grade 65 for this course and that is that for that so we have cu multiplied by pfg which is equals to 12. now the cu is 3 now the pfg equals 4. so when you multiply p pfg multiplied by c gives us 12 that's 3 multiplied by 4. so for this course the weighted grade point for boss 105 for this first semester is 12. the same thing are applicable to mth 105 the same thing is applicable to gst 107 the same thing is applicable to gst 105 
The same thing is applicable to GST 101 and that's how we did that and therefore the total grade point gives us 86. How do we arrive at this 86? We arrive at the 86 by calculating the total of all these that we have 12 here, we have 25 here, we have 16, we have 12, we have 9, then we have 12. Calculation of all this, in summation of all this thing gives us 86. For the first semester result, we are good. So let's move to the second semester result now. Now this is the second semester result of this particular student. Similar courses, different courses. So we have for this particular course, bus 106, which was a um, bus 106 is a four unit course. So we have four units there. So we have for mathematics, that's MT 106 now, five units. We have citizens and um, and the state pool one to six. We have two units. Then we have use of library, which is five, is a five unit course. We have use of communication and the use of English and communication skill, which is just 102. It's a four unit course. Then we have principle of economics, which is um, also a four unit course. So we move to the next thing, which is the percentage grade. We are familiar with this already. 70 to 100 is a A, 60 to 69 is a B, 50 to 59 is a C. Then it's 40 to 49 is a D. Then we have 40 to 44 is a E. Then 0 to 39 is a F. So we have A equals 5. We have B equals 4. We have um, C equals 3. We have D equals 2. We have E equals 1. We have F equals 0. So we have that as that. So the grade point, the points for grades, I mean. So for this particular course, the exam score for this student is 55. So 55 is a C. And for MTH 106 is on 57, which is a C. For Paul 102 is 63, which is a B. For use of library, that's just 104 is a A, which is 70. So um just 102, 44, which is a E. We have principle, excuse me, principle of economics, which is a 122, which is a B, 64. So we have all this computed. So we can go ahead and weight um and weigh the, the grade points. So for a four-unit course. And the student has 55, which is C, which is equal to 3. So we'll multiply the 4 by 3. That, that gives us 12. So we have for a 5-unit course. So now the progression of this, it is okay for you to have higher scores in courses that has high credit units. Now to explain this, stick on, hang on, if you're yet to subscribe to the channel, Please do to encourage, to support this channel, to bring videos as informative as this more your way. So please just hit on the subscribe button. If you are yet to do that, it's just right below the video. Hit on the subscribe button. You can comment, ask your questions, and I can assure you, you'll be attended to. Your questions will be attended to. So as I was explaining, it is better off that you have a high score in a credit unit that is high for example this mth 106 is five units cost according to this illustration is a five unit cost so it's better for you to have a a here than having a c why if you have a a here and we said a is five okay now according to this illustration here the the, the student had 57 which is c so now c now for a five units cost is 15 when you multiply five units course, which is C, and um, and we said C is three, and the five units course is five. Um, five unit course, yeah, it has, it has a C for a five, so it gives us 15. Compared to use of library that this student had A, which is 70. Now, for a five unit course, for you to have A, A equals five. So you can multiply the five by, by a five unit course, which is a whooping 25 BFG compared to when this student has a C in the same five unit course. So it is not advisable for you to have a H in a two unit credit course. Because if you have five in a two unit course, and if you have A, I'm, I'm referring to five now as A, five in a two unit, I mean two unit course, you only multiply five by two. And that's 10. But you can imagine having a A, which is 5, for a 5 unit course. That is 5 multiplied by 5. Please note that. Let's always note that. Let's check our 
courses and know their units so we can know how to work very hard as this will help in boosting our GP. So let's just go ahead. So we have GST 104, the CU is 5, then we have the um, PFG as 5, so that's a 25 and that is applicable to all. Then we add everything together, a 12, 15, 8, 25, 4, 16 as a 80. Then the total credit unit cost now as you can see the total credit unit cost for this particular one is higher compared to the previous one so let's move to the next phase so now for the first semester results we have the table displaying the first and the second semester results so we have our total unit cost for the first semester was 22 for the tgp is 86 then we have therefore the grade point average equals total grade point tgp divided by total credit unit cost which is 86 divided by 22 so for first semester this student is on three points i think this is still upper credit 3.90 so upper credit and uh, second semester uh, it dropped from um 3.9 which is that was in the first semester and 3.2 3.3 which is second semester which is not a good one so um uh, you can see now the tgp here is lower compared to this and as you can see you know um, the great points it's not as if the student didn't do well but the great points here are lower compared to the first semester so that is that for that so logically community yeah cumulative grade points average equals total grade points plus now we're speaking about the cgpa now now it talks about the total grade points now plus total grade points first and second semester divided by the total cost unit first and second semester which is you know the total grade point for first and second semester we have 86 we have 80 and for the units first and second semester credit units we have 24 we have 22 the summation of this grade summation of the grade points is 166 and the summation of the credit unit is 46 now you divide these two it gives you this 63.60 i think this is still um a pack credit if i'm not mistaken 3.60 so we have always approximate your points into two decimal places. Therefore, your CGPA equals 3.60 for your 100 level. Let's not forget, it's just a section we're calculating for. So in cases whereby you have 100 level, 200 level, 300 level, 400 level, there are ways to calculate in that. And if you want me to do a tutorial on that, just hit the comment section and let me know, okay, I'm in 400 level, I'm in 300 level, I'm in 500 level, I like to know my CGPA. This is the same method. This same method applies to doing such, in such scenarios. You can use this method to get your CGPA, but if you want me to do the tutorial, you can just hit the comment below and let me know and I'll respond to it. So um, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for sticking around thank you for watching the tutorial up to this extent and i believe you've gotten a thing or two i am um, i'm assuming and i'm very sure don't let me just do assuming i'm very sure you can take your time to watch this video and implement it the implementation is necessary let me know if you need further assistance in the implementation process if you're stuck don't hesitate to reach out to me i will attach my email address to the link of the video below and my number i'm also very reachable anytime you can just reach out to me and i'll be glad to assist thank you very much and i look forward to seeing you in other tutorials bye bye